everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and this is the first video in my new series, the Affordistrat series of videos. I had the idea to start this series right after I covered this Ert guitar. It's a $200 Strat style guitar. A lot of people love these Ert guitars, a lot of fandom for these guitars, but it got me thinking, how do we know if this is truly a good guitar for the money, unless we compare it to other guitars in the same price point. And then I started thinking about it more. I'm like, this isn't like the affordable board where I can get, you know, pedals for 20 to 30 bucks, stuff like that. Guitars in that price point are a lot more taxing for me. <laughs> I can't buy a bunch of $200 guitars and expect that the ad revenue from the video is gonna eventually cover that. So I sought out a sponsor, the Dario. And they agreed. They agreed to sponsor the first three of the Affordistrat videos. They are covering the production costs of buying the guitar. Now wait for it, this is exciting. Not just buying the guitar, but shipping a guitar to a winner in each video. I'm gonna give a guitar away each one of these videos. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna get a new guitar in, I'm gonna compare it to the previous winner of the Affordistrat and the losing guitar, whichever it might be, is going to get shipped to whatever person wins whatever random contest task I set near the end of the video. So this is a really good reason for you guys to click the bell, set notifications to all, and keep an eye out for these videos when they premiere because they're gonna be generally time-based sorts of contests. You're gonna to wanna to know before everyone else so you can get a jump on it. I'm probably gonna pick the winner like the same day. So you definitely wanna be on top of this. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning, I'm probably gonna connect it to various 60 Cycle Hum social media accounts. So it's good to go follow us on the Facebook group, uh, the Instagram, TikTok, we have a Discord, all that stuff you should get up on. We have a Twitter that we almost never use. Maybe I'll hide a contest in our Twitter at some point. I don't even know how to use Twitter. But anyways, besides just giving you a guitar, Daddario's also thrown in their maintenance kit, which I use. I have a maintenance kit right here and I use it all the time. They're also gonna throw in a three pack of their XT strings here, the same gauge that I'm gonna be using on these guitars. That's another mechanic of these videos, by the way. I'm not just gonna pull it out of the box and be like, oh, it's not set up good, it lost. I'm gonna change the strings so that each competing guitar has the same set of strings on them. I'm gonna do a setup on each new guitar to get it measurably similar to the previous guitar. There's a little like ruler that comes with these kits. I'm gonna make measurements. I'm gonna get them set up as close as I can to each other. And that way I figure I'll be able to make a really fair distinction, a really fair judgment between each new guitar. So anyways, let's get started. What do I have here? This is an Indio Strat style guitar by Monoprice. Where's my blade? Oh, it comes in a gig bag. That's actually uh, a little bit surprising. I wasn't expecting a gig bag. It's a cheap style gig bag, but it actually has a fairly decent amount of padding. It's not one of those just straight single layer of unpadded nylon gig bags. Here we go. We're getting into it. I paid a little extra for this version of the Indio just because I liked the color. And it got me to, and it got me closer to the $200 mark of the Ert. Nothing extra in the gig bag as far as I can tell. Look at that color, huh? Really fun, light blue burst. 
All right. Visually, first impressions, this is about what I expect from a 200 sub $200 guitar. I can definitely feel the edges of those frets. They're not sharp. They're not pushing out the ends or anything like that, but they're not a high, smooth, polished sort of thing. The nut feels like it might be some kind of nylon that's meant to be like a synthetic bone or something. Pretty normal, ugly, cheap guitar hook. Beak, it's got an eagle beak on the headstock there. Closed back tuners, the little protective film on the back. Made in China sticker. The saddles look really cheap. The pickups look cheap. Single ply pick guard that looks cheap. I mean, it's, it's what you would expect, right? The pots are firm and smooth. They're not making that scraping sound the pots on the Ert were. The bridge looks really super cheap. But I don't know. This could have potential to surprise me. Just because the details look cheap doesn't mean it'll sound bad, right? Just screw in this wiggle stick and then I'll bring it up to tune. Do a little bit of like a first impressions kind of playthrough and then do my string change and setup. The arm fits in there really firm. I'll have to bring it up to tune, but uh, it feels like the springs could be loosened quite a bit. It's a tiny little pressure ding in the body right here. It might just be a finishing flaw. Now it looks like a pressure ding. Another one right here as well. Another one here. Well. That looks like a bubble that was in the paint. A couple little flaws like that around. Before I tune it up, I want to check out uh, the trim block and the springs in here. Interesting cheap plastic on the uh, back plate here. It's not normal pickguard material. It's almost like lunch tray plastic. Cafeteria tray plastic, you know what I mean? There we go. Super duper thin style block on there. Nothing exciting going on there. Three springs. Kind of rough, flaky routing. Which is something that surprised me with the Ert, is that it didn't have that rough, flaky style routing. All right, let me get everything fired up so I can tune this up. All right, all tuned up. Let's go through the pickup sounds and see how this thing feels and plays right out of the box. Yeah, I definitely loosen that, uh, that trim a bit, just loosen the springs. I'm still surprised that the arm fits in there fairly snugly. Like I'd still probably wrap it in a little bit of Teflon tape because I tend to do that with my Strat arms. But I've certainly experienced looser, uh, looser arms in Strat bridges. falling out of tune a little bit. Sounds like the intonation might be off a little bit. I don't know, I'll check that in a bit. First impressions are that you can play it. It's definitely a playable guitar. 
I'm not hitting any huge quality control issues or weirdness that's gonna keep me from playing this guitar and having fun, it's, it's gonna be a matter of personal taste. That has been the bridge pickup though. Here is the number two position. It is humbucking. Middle position. Number four position. And the neck position. I mean, it sounds like a strat. The pickups aren't blowing me away with personality or anything like that. They don't sound like they're extra hot or special in any sort of way. A little bit thin, kind of bright. That's what you expect from a strat anyways. But yeah, it's, it's wholly inoffensive so far. I haven't found anything about it where I'm like, oh, oh no, not this problem. Yeah, the pickups are starting to sound thinner and cheaper to me. Let's try a little bit of drive. This is the uh, Wampler Bell, which is a noble style overdrive. That bridge pickup sounds so bright and nasal. It almost sounds out of phase. It can't be out of phase if it's wired correctly because a single coil pickup by itself can't be out of phase with itself. But the drive is really showing off this really thin nasal character to it. Number two position. Yeah, the number two position gets rid of that really weird, kind of like nasal sort of thin sound I was getting from the bridge. Here's the middle. Number two. No, number four. This is the number four position. And the neck position. There's that nasal sound again. The, uh, the standard Strat wiring that you probably expect from this. The tone, this first bottom tone here controls the number two and the middle position. And then this middle tone here controls the number four and the neck position. All right, I think I'm ready to start doing a restring and a setup on this to get it on the same fair playing field as the Ert. Same strings, same setup, 
and then I'll be able to go back and forth and make judgments about which a Fortistrat gets to win and which a Fortistrat gets to be sent out to a lucky winner. And I'll figure out how I'm gonna pick the winner. <laughs> Now this is gonna be an interesting moment of truth. Sometimes these cheap bridges, the strings get stuck in them. So far so good. Everything looks like it's coming out. Yep, everything's coming out. I don't have to do surgery on a bridge. No idea what brand of strings these are. I have uh, just silver ball ends on there. No way to know who made them. Since I'm here, I might as well take the pit guard off, right? Take a peeky peek. Great big swimming pool route here. That shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Ceramic pickups. When you see the bar magnet on the bottom, that usually means a ceramic pickup. Mini pots. The soldering looks fine. The components are what you would expect in a 200, sub $200 guitar. No surprises there. I should probably try to take the, uh, the film off the pick guard. Yeah, the intonation is out across every string, but I did just change the strings. They're probably a heavier gauge. I should have tested that before I changed the strings. <laughs> That's my bad. But I'm gonna do the work to uh, put it into intonation as close as I can get it for uh, going against the yurt. The action is only slightly higher on the Indio versus the Ert. One millimeter at the 12th fret off, and about half a millimeter at that fifth fret off. So I'll do minor tweaks to the bridge uh, to get that action lower, but the intonation is my main concern right now. I've got the action set up by the numbers <laughs> to the same height as uh, the Ert guitar. It feels really fast to me on those higher frets and it's not buzzing out, which is always the goal. Um, I don't have the Ert set up as low as it could go because I don't like to play with the strings that close to the fretboard. I wanna be able to push a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. So this is set up to my preference and that's what I'm gonna be judging it against is my preference. All right, now for the intonation. Let's see if I can fix that. It's going sharp at the 12th fret, which means that it needs more space. The string needs to be longer to be lower when held at the 12th fret. So I'm gonna tighten the screw here. If there's any room on it, that spring looks very compact right now. So there might not be a lot of, of uh, room left here on this saddle. Oh boy, I've got, I've got that spring behind the saddle really, really clamped down. The G string is getting clamped down the same as that low E. I don't know if there's enough room for that G to intonate, same as the low E. Yeah, that G's gonna be a little bit sharp. That's a bummer. <laughs> ah, first try, there we go.
All right, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend the evening uh, just kind of playing around with this, having fun with it, getting to know the guitar, dialing in the action and the intonation a little bit here and there, um, and then I'll get back on camera tomorrow and do my comparison against the Ert. And then I'll decide. Tomorrow, as far as I'm concerned, this is gonna be one video. You're gonna see a cut and then I'll be back. Then we'll decide which one's the winner and which one's the loser. All right, next day, I'm full of ideas and opinions and observations. I've also spent a bunch of time playing both guitars. I was sitting on the couch last night using my headphone rig to go back and forth between both of these guitars. And I spent some more time dialing in the bridge on the NDO here so that the action and the playability would closely resemble the Ert so there wouldn't be a big discrepancy in you know how they're dialed in. I also raised the pickups on the NDO to be the same distance away from the strings as the Ertz pickups. I also lubricated the nut. I've been using the little lubrication syringe that comes with the Daddario maintenance kit that I use, and I'm a big fan of it. A little bit of like just clear lubrication solution in the, uh, in the nut slots, and any peeing and teeing I might have had just disappears and it's not, you know, black and dirty looking like the uh, the pencil lead thing that I used to do. Um, so yeah, this one has a lubricated nut now, this one has a lubricated nut, both with the same lubricant. What else? I really just spent a bunch of time playing them, going back and forth, jamming along to uh, various tracks I found on YouTube and stuff like that, getting a feel for how these guitars play and how they sound and now I can make a more educated comparison between the two. I think the fair way to do this is to go component by component with this comparison to show which one is better and which one is worse. Let's start at the very top of the guitars, at the headstocks. Aesthetic, headstock aesthetic. Um, I don't like either of these headstocks. <laughs> I think they're both kind of ugly. I got flack for calling the Ert headstock ugly um, because it's basically a rip of the Sur headstock and other kind of boutique-y, higher-end sorts of Strat headstocks. Um, I, I just don't like that shape. I think it's fine. I think it's, it's fine. I think a lot of people will like that shape, but I just don't like it. There's a motorcycle driving by. The Indio headstock is objectively worse. <laughs> I think it is a much uglier headstock in an objective sense. I hate it when there's like a beak on a headstock. I'm sure there's exceptions where I'm fine with it, but yeah, that bird beak, the hook, anytime there's a hook on a headstock, and there's high-end guitars that use a hook on their headstock, and I do not like it. Um, it's just kind of off-putting to me visually. I see what they're trying to do. They can't do a full fender bulb on here without getting a CC to Sisti and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, technically, it's it's like a hundred dollar guitar. You can get these off the mono price site for ninety nine bucks. Even I overpaid. <laughs> I paid like 180 on Amazon because I wanted this color and that's what they were charging for it. I didn't look around and so that's on me. <laughs> but yeah, not a fan of the headstock. Uh, the tuners. The Ert has extra good tuners for $200 guitar. Uh, I'm just really impressed with these tuners. They have a unique feel to them. They feel really high quality. I like the shape and the feel of these really smooth um, tuning pegs on there. They're just a great tuner for a $200 guitar. There's nothing else you can say about them. Uh, the tuners on the Monoprice Indio here are fine. They're just fine. There's no reason you would ever need to change them uh, besides personal preference. They feel firm. They feel stable. They're smooth. They're not jumpy or anything like that. They're what a modern closed back tuner is supposed to be. I've encountered tuners on cheap guitars that are way, way worse, for sure. Now let's talk about these nuts. <laughs> the nut on the Indio 
feels very plasticky. Like a cheaper kind of plastic. Exactly what you would expect on a $99 to $200 guitar. It seems to be cut just fine once I put the lube on there. Um, no tinging or pinging. The strings aren't getting hung up in there at all. So they're cut all right. They're cut fine. Uh, the Ert nut, I think it still is plastic, but it feels like a higher grade of plastic. You know what I mean? Cut just fine. I've had zero issues with the nut on the Ert, playing it for the past month or so or something like that. Um, but I think it is plastic. I went to both their sites and neither Ert or Monoprice had the nut material listed for these guitars. On to frets. Oh boy. Ert is a bit famous for their frets being fairly premium for a budget guitar. They have these really nice rounded ends. There's this high polish thing going on. They're listed some places as being stainless steel. Um, I have my doubts. I would like to figure out a way to test these frets to figure out if they are actually stainless steel. Um, the listing for this guitar on Amazon said stainless steel, but then when I checked it against the site a few weeks back, the ERT site said that this model guitar has nickel silver frets. I asked for clarification on the ERT Facebook group and most people were just kind of like, we don't know. <laughs> and the official ERT representatives that are over there on that group didn't chime in to tell me what was going on. So they might be stainless, they might not be stainless. That doesn't really bother me, but they are really well polished. They have that ball end on each side of the fret. I have found that there's a little bit of overhang on some of the frets on the bottom edge. And if I'm not careful, if I do like an irresponsible, if I do like an irresponsible bend or something, the string can get caught underneath the fret there, especially like on the fifth and the, uh, the fourth and sixth frets there. That can happen all sorts of guitars, but it is something I've noticed recently. But all in all, a really nice fret experience for a $200 guitar, absolutely. Uh, this has a much more normal standard fret experience for a budget guitar, but they're just fine. A little bit more tactile on the ends. Uh, I haven't been able to find anywhere where the string gets caught, like on the Ert. Again, I've spent an evening playing this guitar, not a month like the Ert. So little things like that might appear as I play this guitar more. If I was going to play this guitar more, we'll see. But yeah, the frets are very normal on this for a cheap guitar. I didn't do a rocker test. Maybe I should do that. I should get my little rocker tool and do a comparison that way. They're not as jumbo. They're not a, like a big modern, they're not a big modern jumbo fret like what you get on the Ert. All right, so if I remember correctly, I did this on the Ert, and there are just a couple little places where there is a little bit of a rock. There wasn't anything major going on as far as the fret level goes on the Ert. Like right there, there's a tiny little bit of a rock. Nothing that should upset me or anyone else. Let's see if the Indio is about the same. I mean, I set up the action to be really similar and I haven't had this guitar buzz out on any of the frets. Tiny little bit of rock there similar to the little bits of rock that I find on the Ert. That actually might be better. I think I'm actually finding less spots 
that rock on the Indio. Yeah, versus the Hurt. <laughs> There's a little rock there on what is that, like the 19th fret? Who cares? <laughs> the fret levelness. The fret level might actually be a tiny bit better on the Indio versus the Yurt. So it's got that going for it. I mean, the amount of fret rock that's going on is so minimal, most people are never even gonna notice. And if they do notice, what are they doing buying $200 guitars if their preferences are that delicate, you know? <laughs> the overall feel of the neck. I'm actually pretty impressed with how comfortable the Indio's neck feels in my hand. It's a very kind of light satin finish. You can feel the wood grain a little bit. It doesn't feel like raw wood. There is some sort of satin finish on it, some sort of clear coat. But you can get a little bit of a grain through there. It's pleasant though. It's, it's a nice feeling uh, neck. The edge of the fretboard isn't overly sharp or anything like that. There's no reason why anyone couldn't play this guitar and you know not be held back by the neck on it. The Ert neck is a nicer feeling neck. Uh, you don't feel any wood grain through the matte finish on it. It just feels like a better clear coat that they put on here and better attention to the finishing details. The edges of the fretboard are rolled a little bit softer than the Indio. The shape of the neck is more modern. It's smaller feeling, uh, less of a traditional strap feeling neck and more of, you know, like leaning into an Ibanez sort of modern playing guitar sort of feel. It's not like flat and wide, like a wizard neck or something like that, um, but definitely a more modern take on a neck. Obviously, this one's got a rosewood style fretboard and you've got a maple style on the other. That's all personal preference. I'm not gonna claim that one is better than the other. Uh, you have your truss adjustment at the heel on the, uh, on the ERT here, which is nice. It's honestly a really nice feature. It makes it really easy to adjust the truss on the fly if you want to. You shouldn't be adjusting the truss often but I did adjust the truss on this when I got it to make it play the way I like guitars to play, and it was very easy. Traditional headstock truss adjustment here. I haven't done any adjustments to it, so I can't do any comparisons in that direction. But it's always a little bit trickier to adjust the truss from the headstock um, because you have limited range with that Allen wrench when you get it down in there and you have to move strings out of the way and stuff like that. Let's start talking about the pickups. Uh, this is pretty important. Pickups are pretty important. And the sound of one of the guitar's pickups versus the other might be a big deciding factor for you if you were theoretically shopping between these two guitars. Um, yes, technically, you can swap pickups for whatever you want. There's Strat style pickups. It will not be hard to find replacements. But if you're buying a $200 guitar, a $99 guitar, do you really want to buy something knowing that you absolutely will have to swap out the pickups? Um, I think if you know that you know that you're gonna swap the pickups on a cheap guitar, I think you should just keep shopping for a cheap guitar where you're not certain that you'll swap the pickups. So let's get into it. We'll start with the Yurt. I'll start off clean on the bridge pickup with uh, no reverb or delay or anything. Here is the number two position. Middle. 
number four. And the neck position. Let's try it with some drive. Bridge position. Number two. Middle. Number four. And the neck. Now both guitars have very similar pickups visually. They might honestly be out of the same place. Like the plastic of the covers looks very similar. Um, the chromed Pull pieces are very similar. That's a, uh, a feature of ceramic pickups. They both have the ceramic bar magnet on the back of them. But to my ear, the Ert pickups sound quite a bit smoother. A warmer kind of like mid-pushed sound where these on the Indio have a really distinct, bright, thin nasal sort of thing going on. They both sound like Strat pickups, especially ceramic Strat pickups, but I think most people would prefer the pickups in the Urt. Do a little surf test here with some reverb. That was on the bridge position. They both sound a little out of tune right now. <laughs> I think the most important thing I noticed between the two guitars, as far as pickup sound goes, when I was jamming on the uh, the couch with my headphone rig last night, is that the kind of more nasal quality of the Indio pickups hit drive in a very different way. Where this guitar is more prone to sound smooth and creamy, this one is more prone to sound uh, almost like out of phase in a way. I'm not sure if the difference will translate uh, through microphones, through the YouTube compression and stuff like that. But in room, like they both sound quacky and stratty, but there's just something a little bit more nasal and thin. 
with the Indio pickups. I'm not totally sure how to describe that. Um, my gut tells me that I prefer these pickups. Bridge hardware. Um, there is a clear difference in bridge hardware between these two guitars. This has exactly what you would expect on a $99 to $200 guitar. Um, a cheap looking Strat style bridge with these very cheap looking saddles, screws that stick up way outside of the saddles themselves. Uh, I had a little trouble getting the intonation right on, on the low E and the G string. Um, to get it into intonation, I'd have to do a little surgery here and pull out the springs so the saddles can be pulled all the way back against the back of the bridge there. Or I could pull the saddles out and use an angle grinder to remove metal off the back end of the saddle to give me more room to pull them back more. Um, really tiny. Like that's the kind of trim block that came in Mexican Fenders in the mid 90s. That's a throwback right there. I haven't seen a, a tiny little trim block like that in a long time. Where the Ert has a visibly superior bridge. I think it's still you know, off brand. It's not a Wilkinson or anything like that, but it is trying very hard to have that functionality. Really nice kind of matte finished uh, saddles here. The screws do pop out in the middle. They did half size screws on the outside saddles and then full size screws in the middle. Kind of wish they had just done half size screws across the board. I think they would have worked just fine. Um, but it's also got the arm that you can tighten by adjusting a little Allen key uh, on the back side of this when you press it in you find that allen key and you can tighten the bar so it's always firm and where you want it to be nice big block in there nice big block fully modern you know no one needs to complain about this bridge at all it's not branded but it's a very functional bridge it's comfortable it plays nice uh, i have no complaints now that i have it dialed in so that leaves some basic hardware stuff. I mean, the, the pots and the switch, the wiring. Um, this had very simple wiring in it. About what you would expect. Nothing impressive about the guts of this guitar. This had the full size pots in here, if I remember correctly. A bit more of a rat's nest as far as the, the wiring went. Um, yeah, it was fine though. It's totally, both these guitars, they're set up totally fine, a little bit of a scrapey noise from these pots. I'm getting a noise from this because there's still plastic trapped underneath them, but the pots themselves are nice and smooth. But functionally, there's nothing to worry about there with either of them, honestly. I mean, personal preference. It's up to you. If you have pots that you love or switches that you love, you're gonna swap them out on any guitar, really. And that leaves just kind of the, uh, the general appearance and feel of the bodies and then kind of discussing the pleasure factor of each guitar. I really like this finish. I really like this blue burst. If you're gonna be buying a cheap guitar, it might as well look fun. You might as well take some risks on the finish. And I think this guitar does that really well. So often budget guitars live in this territory of, do you want sunburst black or blue? <laughs> and red. Do you want sun? Do you want sunburst, black, blue, or red? And then that's it. I think cheap guitars should have crazy outlandish colors. They should be risks. It should be visual stylistic risks. And this guitar does that really well. So despite there being a few little finishing flaws as it was delivered to me, some little pressure dings and things like that. I really like this finish. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, the finish on the Ert is technically a more premium option. This really nice kind of matte finish, um, a decent sunburst sort of here. Uh, you can see some grain in there, which is nice. It's not a premium grain or anything like that. The cut of the body is a lot more specific. You have a comfort heel or something similar to a comfort heel here. It just tilts into the neck a little bit. Um, you have more body cuts in a more modern style way. Technically, most people would prefer this body. <laughs> I'm fine with both bodies. Both feel fine to me. Let's see how the resonance compares. 
Ah, they're close enough. There's no reason to nitpick the resonance of these bodies. They both feel like guitars. So, pleasure factor. Which one do I enjoy playing? Now that they're both set up about the same, I've figured out the pickups and things like that. Um, I'm honestly really surprised by this guitar. Like this is a really great $200 guitar. It shoots above its price point. A lot of the other channels out there that have covered Ertz get into really hyperbolic things and they're like, oh man, it plays, it feels just as good as any like $2,000 guitar. No, no it doesn't. But it is a really, really good $200 guitar. It's a really, really good $200 guitar. I'd, I'd say that it reminds me more of like a $275 guitar, maybe even a $300 guitar. But a $2,000 guitar, no. <laughs> there are issues about it and things about how it just feels in its presentation. Um, the fact that no plastic piece matches the color of another plastic piece on here. This really ridiculous, very, very neon green guard on here that the camera is not going to pick up. I swapped the, uh, the knobs on here because the stock knobs were just the cheapest version of strat knobs I've ever encountered in my life. These knobs are better than the knobs that came on this. <laughs> but I am very surprised by this Indio. The fact that you can get this guitar for 99 bucks, even though I paid more, <laughs> is impressive to me that this is technically a $99 guitar. I could play this guitar. I could gig this guitar. I could build my sound around these pickups and you know make adjustments to make them work and stuff like that. I think the pickup is the pickups are really the weak part for me, which is impressive. It's impressive that that is the weak part because the rest of it is totally playable. I could recommend this guitar to a new player. I'm like, yeah, you're gonna be fine. You get this $99 guitar, you get like the cheapest amp you can get or like a headphone amp or something like that, and you're off to the races. You can learn to play guitar on this. The setup that I did on it was purely to match the setup on this. It came set up really close to fine. Like, I'm honestly very impressed. It feels, it looks like a $99 to $200 guitar. It is what you would expect out of a budget guitar where this exceeds the expectations of a $200 guitar. This is what you would expect visually, but the playability of it, I, cheap guitars have gotten so good, guys. It, it is honestly impressive. I'm not gonna do the YouTuber thing where I'm like, oh my gosh, you never need to buy a Fender Strat ever again. This is just as good as any $900 guitar. No, no. It's still a budget off-brand guitar that you, get off of, that you get off of Amazon. You're not cheating the system, but the quality control, the build quality of budget guitars has gone up so dramatically. Just so dramatically, like that's the thing that is impressing me. Um, you could easily buy one of these and go on a modding journey to learn how to work on things, which is something that I think a lot of guitarists love doing and should learn how to do. You shouldn't be afraid to do it. Anything I did on the bridge here can be put back. Any mistakes I made or that you would make on a bridge like this can be put back. You go do a guitar tech, they'll charge you 75 to 150 bucks for a setup or something like that, and they can get it playing the way a guitar should play. Um, but you can learn how to do all that stuff yourself. And doing it on a cheap guitar is a great way to learn. You can also learn how to completely swap out all the hardware on either of these. There's so much cheap, just super affordable Strat hardware out there that you could change the bridge out for like 20, 30 bucks and get a completely better, different kind of bridge experience. Uh, the same thing with the wiring. This would be a great guitar to learn how to wire things. Just completely redo all the electronics in there if you want to. It's a swim pool route, so you can you know jam whatever pickups you want in there. You find a pick guard that fits this. It probably takes a Strat pick guard just fine, and you could you know, convert it to a humbucker guitar or stuff like that. Cheap guitars are excellent platforms for hobbyists, young guitarists, whoever, to explore working on guitars because you're not gonna mess anything up and anything you do mess up can be repaired. You don't have to worry about screwing up the value of some higher end guitar. That being said, 
I mean, clearly this is the winner. Clearly the Ert is the winner. It is the better guitar, in my opinion, versus the Indio here. So I'm gonna end up giving this away. <laughs> what am I gonna do? What's the contest gonna be? So that you, the viewer, can win this guitar, a three pack of XT strings, and the maintenance kit that I've been using to set up my guitars. I will say before I pitch the contest, um, this is open to US residents only. If you are international and you do wanna take a chance at winning this, um, I might ask that you cover the difference in shipping. Um, typically it would cost me probably 40 to 75 bucks to ship this within the States. I have no idea what it would cost to ship this international. Please consider this is a $99 guitar. I think it would be kind of crazy to have to spend a couple hundred bucks to ship this to Europe or the Philippines or something like that. So I know that people get upset when contests are US only, but I mean, it's, it's clearly a reasonable logistics issue. Right guys, you can understand that. All right, so now the contest. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go join the 60 Cycle Hum Facebook group. There's a link down below in the description and post, without comment, post a picture of a bicycle. Like it doesn't have to be your bicycle. You don't have to take the picture. You can find it on the internet. Try to find a bicycle picture that you think, I think will be entertaining and just spam the group with bicycle pictures. I'll pick my favorite bicycle picture by the end of the day and that person will get a message from me telling them that they won. <laughs> and I'll get your shipping information and everything like that. So have fun guys, can't wait to see those bicycles. Thanks for watching. I'll probably play out with some sort of jam with this guitar. And you know what? Stay grounded. Bye everybody. Mm -hmm.